Hi, my name is Manu Alikani, and I am the Dean and Professor at Citro Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citro Channel. The topic of today's discussion is the factors that are affecting the one couple system. Let's start with the example that we uh, went through it last time, the size of the bracket. Is the width of the bracket important when we are setting up a one couple system? The answer to that question was, if the bracket is narrower, the couples that appear in the system will be smaller. And therefore, just the bracket width is different. You're expecting that the, the system that has a narrower bracket produce lower forces and lower moments to the degree that if the weight of the bracket becomes so small that it's become almost like a button means that the wire does not have two contact point there would be no forces and moment in your system so bracket width is very important in one couple system the second factor is the wire itself is the material of the wire is important assume we are using exactly the same size and same shape wire we know that the stainless steel is a stiffer that TMA and TMA is stiffer than night high. Therefore, if you have everything in your system exactly the same, one expect that with the stainless steel, you will have higher forces and moments in the system while with the TMA and night high, these should decrease. Again, next time when we are setting a one couple system, uh, we should select a material properly to the magnitude of the forces and moments that appear in our system would be biologically uh, reasonable. How about the size of the wire? Assuming the shape of the wire is the same, we know that as we increasing the size of the wire, the stiffness of the wire increases. Therefore, one couple system that has a larger size wire would produce uh, larger forces and larger moments. How about the effect of the shape of the wire? Does that make any difference if you are using round or rectangular wire? Well, the answer to this question depends on the dimension that you are setting your one couple system. In the first order view or occlusal view, in another word, uh, the shape round or rectangular does not affect the one couple system. Only if you're assuming that both of them have the same stiffness, it means that the wire stiffness is not a variable. In that case, the shape of the wire is irrelevant. Can produce the same one couple system whether you are using round wire or rectangular wire. The same thing with the sagittal view or second order view. In that system also doesn't matter whether you are using round or rectangular, as long as you're controlling the stiffness of the wire to be the same, you're expecting the same result to appear. How about third order view? To make the example more uh, challenging, let's put a bracket on the anterior teeth and the button on the, on the canine. And I'm putting a round wire between the bracket in the front and button on the canine. Do you think there would be a one couple system? Of course, the answer is no. Why? Because the round wire does not produce any couple inside the bracket in the third order view. Only a rectangular wire can produce couple in the third order view. Therefore, uh, in the left side of the screen, if you put a round wire, there would be no one couple system. The wire just stand passively between the anterior teeth and the canine. On the other hand, assume you have a, a good size rectangular wire to bring the wire up to connect it to the button on the canine, you producing a couple on the front and therefore a one couple system appears in your system. Therefore, the shape of the wire is important in the third order view not in the first and second order view. Let's make the example now a little bit reverse. What happens if you put the bracket in a set of front teeth? We put it in the back teeth. In this setup, uh, in the left side, you have a molar and the incisors, and in incisors, we put a button, and we use a round wire from the molar to the button in the incisors. Do you have a one couple system? Yes, the answer is yes, I have a one couple system because the molar can produce a couple on the wire and therefore a one couple system exists, vertical forces appears, a moment appears on the molar. What happens if I use a rectangular wire? Well, the rectangular wire, as we discussed before, in the sagittal view or second order view, does exactly the same thing as a round wire. So you're expecting the same effect. If there is a bracket on the molar and there is a button on the incisors, uh, please pay attention, I just put a button on the incisors, it's not a bracket. If it was a bracket, it becomes a two couple system that we will discuss later on. 
So if I have only a button on the incisors and I have a bracket on the back, in the sagittal view, regardless of the shape of the wire, you have a one couple system. How about angle of activation? Before uh, I discuss the angle of activation, let's review the terminology. Angle of activation is the angle that wire makes with the bracket slot uh, before we engaging the wire inside the bracket. Therefore, if you activate the wire way more, it means that the wire is making a larger angle with the bracket before engagement, the angle of activation is more. And this is very different from angle of engagement. Angle of engagement is the angle that wire and bracket can make with each other when the wire is engaged in the bracket. Depends on the size of the wire and the size of the slot of the bracket, that angle has a maximum amount. More than that, you cannot increase because physically it's impossible. So angle of activation can be different, but angle of engagement has a limit. Angle of activation depends on the activations that you have. It can increase from zero to 90 degrees, uh, but angle of engagement is limited. In orthodontics, the most important part is angle of activation. What happens if before I engaging the wire inside the bracket, I increase the angle of activation? Do you think the couple increases or decreases? Yes, you are right. The, actually, the amount of the vertical forces on the bracket increases if angle of activation increases. So if you look at the left side of the screen, uh, because the angle of activation is less than the uh, right side of the screen, the couple and forces that appear in your system would be less. The other factors that I wanted to talk about is the distance between the bracket. Would it make any difference if you have one couple system between two bracket or one bracket and button that are far than one bracket and button that are closer to each other? Let's look at this example. If you look at the uh, left side of the screen, the distance between the bracket and the, um, and the button is uh, smaller than the right side. As you can see, as soon as you bring the teeth closer, the angle of activation increases. Therefore, it makes sense that uh, the forces and moments when they are closer, uh, the brackets and the button would be more than when they are farther away. Now, what happens if I increase the distance between the bracket and button while keeping the same angle of activation? Yes, if you remember from the definition of the couple is force time distance. If you are increasing the distance, then therefore your forces drops. So as you are increasing the distance between your bracket and the button, as long as you are not changing the angle of activation, still your forces and moment decreases just because the amount of the distance in your system increases. Thank you for uh, listening to another session of CTOR channel. Um, the topic for the next discussion is how to set up a one couple system. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the like button uh, if you enjoy these sessions. Thank you again.